Metric units have two components or, or two parts. They have the base unit and then they also have the prefix. The base unit tells us the type of unit that we're looking at. So for example, it tells us, the base unit tells us if it's a volume unit or a, a unit of length or a unit of mass. The prefix tells us the magnitude or the size of the unit. So for example, is it a very large distance or is it a very small distance? Is it a very large mass or is it a very small mass? In chemistry, there are five metric base units that you need to be familiar with. There are more than five units in general, but we only really need to be familiar with five base units. And these you need to um, you you need to know quickly. So I, I want to say my instinct is say I want you to memorize them, but you're going to use them so often that you don't really need to memorize them. In the metric system, the base unit of length is the meter. You're going to see a lot of overlap between this and the the SI base units. The base unit of mass is the gram. The base unit of time is the second. The base unit for volume is the liter. And the base unit for energy, there's actually two, the joule or the calorie. Now it is important that the joule is a capital J and this calorie is a lowercase c. A capital C calorie means something different. So in terms of abbreviation, the abbreviation for meter is a lowercase m, the abbreviation for gram, lowercase g, for second, a lowercase s, for liter, a capital L, for joule, a capital J, and for calorie, lowercase c-a-l. Again, do not capitalize because that means something different. Now, in terms of our prefixes, remember the prefix we add to the base unit to, to express its size. There are a lot of metric prefixes. There are six that we will encounter more, more frequently than anything else. So these are the six that you need to be the most familiar with. The mega, mega, which is abbreviated with a capital M. And it's very important when we're dealing with the metric system that you really respect when things are capitalized and not capitalized because a capital M and a lowercase m mean two different things. Um, kilo, which is abbreviated a lowercase k. Centi which is abbreviated a lowercase c. Milli, which is a lowercase m. Micro, which is a lowercase Greek mu. Looks kind of like a u with a swirl in front of it. And then nano, which is abbreviated a lowercase n. Now, in terms of what each of these prefixes represent, mega represents 10 to the 6, which is 1 million. Kilo represents 10 to the 3, or 1,000. Centi represents 10 to the negative 2, which is the same as 1 hundredth. Milli represents 10 to the negative 3, which is 1 thousandth. Micro is 10 to the negative 6 and nano is 10 to the negative 9. So let's see how these prefixes and base units come together. So for example, if you saw a unit, let's say um, a measurement said 1 capital M lowercase g, we would pronounce that 1 megagram. Remember the prefix comes first, giving it the magnitude. So mega, and then the base unit comes second 
tells us what type of measurement it is. So this is a mass, mass measurement, one megagram. And let's say that we wanted to convert that down to the base unit of gram. Because we know that the prefix mega represents 10 to the sixth, one megagram is equal to 10 to the sixth grams. And again, that is because mega represents 10 to the six. So one mega anything, one mega second is 10 to the six seconds. One mega liter is 10 to the six liters. And I'm gonna actually write this in another way. One megagram is 10 to the sixth grams or one times 10 to the six grams. And I'll show you why I do that in just a second. What if we had two nanoseconds and we wanted to convert that back down to the base unit of seconds? So in this case, two nanoseconds are two times, what's nano? 10 to the minus nine, 10 to the minus nine seconds. So all that we have to do, kind of think about this nanosecond, kind of think about it like it's a math problem. It's n times s. And what is n? n is 10 to the minus 9. 10 to the minus 9 times that base unit of second. Think about this like a math problem. Um, let's do, let's see if we can squeeze one more example into here. How about 5 kilojoules? 5 kilojoules. Uh, if you're feeling nervous, like how am I going to know uh, what I'm looking at here, the prefix is always the first thing. So whatever comes first is your prefix. And then the base unit is always the second thing. So kilojoules, and let's convert that kilojoules into joules. How would we do that? Five kilojoules is the same thing as five times... What's kilo? Kilo is 10 to the third, five times 10 to the third joules.